Hi everyone, welcome back to Grow Roots. This is Shannon and today we are gonna do some front yard maintenance. Oh my goodness, it is quite a jungle. But first I wanted to introduce you to Gummy. This is our little 10 week old Anatolian Shepherd mix puppy that we adopted from the animal shelter last week. She's been with us seven whole days and woo, just give me a little patience in my videos because there have been several videos I needed to get done this week. But this little Missy is keeping me on my toes. She is hands-on every moment of the day. And so <laughs> I am finally getting around to doing something that really, really needs to be done. And that is some front yard maintenance here. And so come along with me. Okay, so one of the things that I have put off for a really long time that just has to get done today is deadheading uh, my Sweet William and cleaning this up. As you can see, it is done blooming. I did a whole video about this plant. It was so, so spectacular in the spring and these were just full of like mop head type pink blooms and now it's done and I actually want to collect the seeds. It's super easy. I'm going to show you how to do it uh, while I deadhead them as well because the plant just needs to be cleaned up. However, I'm going to need to do this last in my project because um, you probably can't tell because you didn't see them before, but it is early morning and the sun is just coming up and what happens with sweet william is these are all little seed heads that open up during the day but right now in the morning i've noticed and learned that they close up in the morning so i'm gonna do the rest of my front yard maintenance and hopefully by the end these will be kind of opened up and i will be able to go ahead and harvest some of these seeds for you and show you how to do that it's super super easy <laughs> another thing that i need to get done is these uh daffodil leaves need to get taken care of they still haven't been taken back but you can see they're also still green some of them so it's okay they've been up for a really long time and i'm gonna get rid of that and clean that up uh just one little moment look at this super tuna jazzberry it's taking off now and it's actually mixing in with the dusty miller and I was gonna trim the Dusty Miller back until I realized that the Jazzberry was going in with it. And I kind of love that look, so I'm gonna leave that. Um, but another maintenance is this, this vine right here is my super invasive vine for my front yard that no matter what, I cannot get rid of it. One of you, uh, I was so thankful for this, one of you suggested to, uh, instead of pulling them, to get rid of all of the leaves and that will starve the, the vines. And I did that very, very di diligently when they first started coming up. However, um, it just didn't work. They, they just sprouted elsewhere or grew new leaves and they're just all over my garden. So I'm just gonna be pulling them like I used to. As you can see, one of the pests of my garden right there. Oh my goodness, I hate these things. They're eating the plants. See if I could get it. Nope. See, I can never get them, y'all. <laughs> They're too fast for me. Um, let's see. What else? Oh, this bird bath desperately needs to be cleaned out. This is just full disclosure. This is what happens with gardens when you get really, really busy and they get crazy. Um, it's beautiful, but yeah, there's some grasses right there that need to be pulled out. Some grasses back there. Some grasses pulling up in the sunshine legustrum. Now is also the time for me to prune the sun sunshine legustrum. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get around to that today. Uh, we'll just have to see what my puppy is going to let me do. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, and another thing. Look, the Vitex tree is in full bloom. It is spectacular. So awesome. But let me show you. This is what it looks like when you don't prune regularly. I haven't really done that for a few weeks. And so, um, yes, these are all shoots of the Vitex tree coming up and I need to get rid of all of that to keep my tree form shape. It's trying to become a bush on the bottom and I don't want that. It's just not my thing. So I'm gonna take care of that as well. And yeah, I believe that's gonna be it for today. So uh, come along with me and join me as I do my work. 
Okay, Gummy is back inside and hopefully maybe taking a nap and I'm gonna try and tackle pruning my Vitex tree and getting all those suckers out of the way. So basically you can see where it is just sending up suckers. This is where I actually pruned it. I pruned this branch off in February because this was going like way out over my grass and I didn't want that. And then all around it, it's just, it sent up suckers. All over here is where I just pruned some suckers. So uh, that's kind of what I'm taking care of. Then you can see all behind it, the suckers that are coming in behind it. So it is a vigorous tree no doubt about it and it likes to be bushy so if you want it to be tree formed like i do then it is going to take some regular pruning but to me it's worth it because of the blooms and i'll show you what it looks like in just a moment it's just so amazing and the bees and the butterflies are all over it in the middle of the day let's see get these guys away and see I've also got I've got my vinca ground cover that's what that is this is what I want there but I've also got this vine and this is what I don't want there so I'm going to try and take care of all of that today as well a little bit more down here and then we'll work up the branches after all of this stuff is done okay so just wanted to show you that looks 10 times better and that was like 10 minutes of pruning no big deal um and so that just i cut all of those little pieces that are trying to grow along that branch and then everything down there and let me back up and show you this magnificent tree these panicles can get to be 8 to 12 inches long and they are just absolutely stunning so the tree is shaped not exactly how i would love it to be um <laughs> this past february i pruned it so that it had this one main trunk and then three trunks going up but i don't know if that's going to work so here i've got this offshoot that's going that way i've got one going straight up that looks kind of funky and i've got that one it's just what it's going to be for this season uh the long shot of it looks okay you know it's just not spectacular i really think it will fill in i hope um i was kind of hoping this big long branch was going to shoot off a bunch of branches to kind of fill in that middle gap and i'm hoping that's what happens i'm gonna leave I do have some shoots actually, and those are the ones that I'm gonna leave to try and fill in the middle of the tree because I so heavily pruned it. So there's an offshoot there, there's an offshoot there, and then um, actually there's about three of them right there if you can see it. So I've got some, 
I've got some growth happening in the middle there and I hope it fills in. But this season, I think is just gonna be like a rebuild season because I, I pruned it so heavily before. But it's just so beautiful, I love it. So this is what I'm going to try to tackle next. This is my bird bath and the birds heavily rely on this for a water source, especially when it's like super, super, super hot there at this thing all day, every day. But you can see this is really, I think I cleaned it just a month ago. And so, whew, yeah, there's some really bad algae growth. Basically what I do is I get um, just a bowl of really hot water with a little bit of dish soap in it and I scrub it with just a washcloth and then I spray it out with a jet sprayer on my hose. And usually that gets it enough. Um, if you all know of a product. I've heard of a product that you can put in bird baths to keep it from growing algae and that it's also safe for, for birds and pollinators. If you know of such a thing and you know that it works for you, please comment below and let me know where I can purchase that because I would definitely be interested. That would be worth the money to try and not have to clean this thing so often and for the birds and the pollinators to have clean water instead of algae filled water there. So uh, yeah, that's my next project to tackle. So wow, <laughs> 10 times better, not completely perfect. And also my bird bath is not level, so I'm not able to fill it up as high as I would want it to. My husband is actually in South Africa on business right now, but when he comes back, I'm gonna see if he can level this again. Um, and so we can keep more water in it so that it doesn't get low so fast, so it doesn't get so much algae. I think it'll be a lot better. And this is a little solar fountain that I picked up from Amazon. On. It's not working right now because it's very cloudy. The sun is just coming up, but later on in the day, it will get that water moving and that's better for algae development. And it's also to prevent the mosquitoes from breeding in it because the mosquitoes are already out. I already have my bug spray on. They're already trying to bite me. And yes, they will breed in any standing water. But if you put a little solar fountain in your standing water, then that keeps that water moving and they can't really breed in that environment so the fountain or i'm sorry the bird bath is now finished it looks so much better okay so the next thing that i'm going to do is go ahead and start pulling all of the vines and grass and any other weeds that i see in the garden
Okay, so <laughs> the garden might look kind of the same. I don't know, but to me, it looks way different. Those vines are gone. Most, well, most of the vines are gone. Most of the grass is gone. The sunshine, the gustrum, as you can see, looks like so much better uh, because those vines are out of it. I pulled those. Um, coming over here, the Vitex tree looks so much better without those suckers coming. And uh, I'll just take you through a quick run through of the garden to see how it's looking because I won't be filming the June garden tour for a week, week and a half or so. And so there's things that are going on that I'm afraid are going to be not going on during that garden tour. So let me just uh, update you on the garden really quick. Okay, so the sunshine the gushroom looks way better now that it's free of all of those vines. I really should prune it down. This is the right time of year to do that before it gets really, really super, super duper hot. However, I don't have the energy in me today with kind of a newborn puppy at home. Like, I'm getting woken up constantly at night and whew, don't have the energy to do that to tackle that project today. It's a big project. Um, another thing that I wanted to get it done but it's they're still not open i wanted to show y'all how to deadhead the sweet william um, and collect the seeds and i'm waiting for these little seed pods to open up it's not quite um they're not open yet because it's the morning and so i might wait till later on today and film that for you uh, but just generally looking through it looks cleaner it is getting jungly already we are almost to june one of the things that is flowering right now is my balloon flower and it's huge i didn't expect it to get so big and it's kind of crazy i could trellis it i suppose maybe i will but anyway uh <laughs> look at this he's oh i just this is like my favorite color honestly and then it's going with the jazz the super tunia jazzberry and they complement each other so well with the dusty miller the super tunia jazzberry that purple verbena oh my goodness i didn't really plan that but it is working and i'm it's getting ready to just completely flower so that's really fun. Another thing that I have flowering are, and they won't stand up, my Rudbeckia seedlings that are voluntary from last year. My Rudbeckia did not make it, but these uh, seed, the three seedlings came up in the front border and I transplanted them back there. And they just look lovely back there with that May Night Salvia that's coming out of bloom. That is another project that I could tackle if I had the energy <laughs> to do it. Uh, pruning back the May Night Salvia. It's done with its first flush of blooms. And actually, yeah, it's getting ready for its second flush. So last year I did a video on how to prune back your May Night Salvia after it's uh, done pruning for that first time in the spring. And then you'll get ready for like another second flush that's just spectacular. However, this year, I don't know if I have it in me <laughs> to do that pruning. Um, and I already see it's already gumming up with that second flush. So I'm kind of too late to do it anyway, to be honest. So I'm just going to I'm just going to go with the flow. If I wanted to, I could deadhead these spent stems. But see, it's got all of these other spent stems right next to it that are ready to bloom. So really all, all I could do right now is just to take that that bloom off so that all we see are the nice fresh blooms. Um, I could do that. I don't know if I'm going to do that. We, <laughs> we will have to see. Um, I went ahead and took care of the Vitex tree. Looks so much better. I've already shown that to you. Just to update you on the Ajuga, that's Burgundy Glow Ajuga. It's doing really, really, really nice. And over here, I wanted to update you really quick on my Endless Summer Hydrangea. Wow, if you are in North Texas and you grow Endless Summer Hydrangeas or really any type of big leaf hydrangea, you know that this year was spectacular for them. <laughs> and it sure was. I think it. we had a fairly mild winter and so that didn't destroy the spring blooms and so uh, what ended up happening was just a spectacular flush of blooms and we got lots of rain this spring as well which helped them so this year has been marvelous for everybody that is growing and the summer hydrangeas but i wanted to show you i finally achieved a pure blue bloom 
look, and it's growing in the ground. A lot of people say in North Texas with our clay soil that is alkaline, you cannot turn them blue. Well, you can if you're diligent enough. Oh, see, here's a vine that I missed. Let's get it out. <clears throat> uh, oh, see, those are tough. See, I just ruined that blossom. Um, I'm going to have to get that when I have two hands to do it. But look, there's a partial partial bloom that's spectacular bright blue bloom and right in here is a blue and purple bloom so I've got lots of them that are partial but this one is fully blue and I absolutely love it I actually really like it partial I like the mix of colors in the same plant for sure so I one of the things I did I don't know if you saw it but a lot of these like I still had some dead stems dead woody stems that I had to prune off so that they weren't they were kind of like an eyesore so I pruned those off and it looks so much better it's just looking fantastic um, and those are gonna start kind of turning greenish fairly soon I don't know if it'll be this way for my dune garden tour or not but that's why I wanted to show it to you um, let's see what else what else can I show you? Super Tunia Bubblegum in this container is doing amazing. It's actually running into the Sunshine Lacustrum, which is crazy. There's one of those other Rudbeckias that are blooming. I also have some blooms coming up on my Limelight Hydrangea Standard. Oh, yes, I wanted to show this to you. I've called this the Year of the Vine, and it's going to be. I think my, my vision is coming to fruition, if you can see right over there. It is starting to bloom and the vine is crawling up this new espalier that I made. That is Black Eyed Susan vine and it is planted in a container behind that where you see the impatience. A Black Eyed Susan vine and Morning Glory, a blue pickety Morning Glory. And it's the Black Eyed Susan that is just going crazy and it's blooming. So a bloom right there and another couple blooms over there and it's crawling up very quickly. And my idea is to have it grow all the way up here and meet halfway and then on this side i have more um this side is actually blue pickety morning glory and it's actually doing pretty good there's no blooms on it right now but it has bloomed for me before and then on this side is the black eyed susan vine planted down there and it is growing up that way. So this one is definitely going to be more of a cross with the Morning Glory and Black Hood Susan. And it's not, let me see, I didn't check. I don't see any blooms on that one right now, but it will. Like, that is a growing weed, but I saw a bunch of blooms on this before. I can't find them right now while I'm filming, but that's okay. It's a little bit further behind than the other side but it's going to catch up really quickly as well and i believe this should grow up that espalier and then meet halfway in the middle and then i will have just these beautiful vines um that cover my entrance way isn't that spectacular it's gonna be i just know it it's gonna happen right unless it gets like super super hot and everything dies which might happen <laughs> um, okay so that's pretty much, well, let me show you Big Daddy, my other endless summer hydrangea. It's further along than the other one. And as you can see, these are turning green and that's okay. I'm gonna let that happen. Some people will deadhead them at this point. This is the right time to deadhead them. When they turn green this way, that way you're not killing off any uh, new growth and you're not killing off next year's blooms but I'm going to keep it this way because they will actually turn colors for me in um, October November December and they'll turn a deep maroon color I apologize for my dog that's bear and the new puppy playing I know you can probably hear that in the background I do apologize but I just wanted to show you the big daddy full of blooms more than I've ever ever seen before there's probably 50 or more blooms on it at the moment and still more to come for sure it's just spectacular so yeah um i don't think i'm gonna get to the sweet william today i'm gonna do a separate video on that so stay tuned for that and stay tuned for garden tours my june garden tours are coming up because next week is june thank you so much for watching everyone i wanted to 
shout a huge thank you to all of my subscribers and everybody who likes, comments, and shares my videos because this past week I reached a huge milestone, huge milestone that every YouTuber, like a new YouTuber, kind of dreams for and doesn't really know if it's ever going to happen. I reached full monetization this past Yay! week because I got to 1,000 subscribers. And so I just thank each and every one of you for the bottom of my heart. Uh, it does not mean I'm quitting my day job anytime soon, y'all. It is not a very big paycheck that I'm expecting, but just to receive anything, pennies, for putting out content that I have a passion for, that I love sharing with you all. And I'm so thankful that each of you support me by subscribing, liking, commenting, and all of that because uh, that helps as, as well. And so maybe I can start paying for all of the things that I need for the garden now. And that would be amazing, right? And I just, again, oh, I just cannot even tell you how thankful I am and how fun this is. And uh, just keep watching, uh, keep subscribing for more content from me from my garden. Thank you so much, everybody. This is Shannon from Grow Roots. Have a fantastic day, everybody. Bye-bye.